Welcome. How are you guys doing so far? Good. Having fun? Yes. Lots of things happening here. At some point, I thought they wanted to have me base jump in this room. It's crazy stuff. My name is Francesco, and I'm the engineering manager for a cloud messaging team in Android. How many of you guys in this room have experience with C2DM? Android Cloud, a lot of you. OK, I'm in the right room. <laughs> So let me start giving you a brief introduction about this service, which we launched in labs two years ago at Google I.O. 2010. Now, very simple. What C2DM allows you is for your server to send a message to your application on any Android device. What C2DM allows for is what we call the send to sync mechanism. Let me explain with an example. We have a new server that wants to deliver an update on a topic to the devices of its subscribers. So the server goes ahead, sends the message, and when the application receives it, all it does is to connect back to the new server and grab for the new data. Now, the beauty of this mechanism is that it avoids the application the nuisance of having to continuously poll to check if there even is new data. So this saves battery life. Another thing that C2DM does is that if the server sends a message and the device is offline, it holds on to the message and delivers it as soon as the device comes back online. Now, C2DM messages are not really meant to carry the content with them. What they're most, mostly used for is to say, look, there's something new, go check it out. So if the new server sends three messages which refers to the update on the very same topic, and the device is offline, it would be really silly for us to deliver all three of them when it comes back online, because the application will continuously connect to the server and grab for the very same data. So C2DM does something that we call collapsing. When the device comes back online, we deliver only one of these. This saves data and allows for an easy application development, because since the server takes care of this use case, all that our application needs to do is, every time I get a message, I'm going to connect to my server. Now, send to sync is a simple and flexible mechanism. However, much can be done to optimize for all the use cases out there. And speaking about improvement, let's see how today we get started with C2DM. Drop it. So we need a Google account so that we can go ahead and create and manage a client login token. At this point, we can compile a sign-up form and wait until we receive an activation email confirmation. At this stage, we are granted some initial quota. Now, the more we develop the application, the more users we get, hopefully, the more messages we send, the more quota we need, we come back, ask for more quota, and so on and so forth. Without any doubt, there is a lot that we can do to improve this process. Nonetheless, this service has seen a lot of traction. Along with all the applications of you guys that before raised your hands, we have tens of thousands of applications that are actively using this service every single day. C2EM processes billions of messages every single day, which is kind of impressive for a service that launched in labs. We were also kind of impressed by the amount of great feedback that you guys provided. So we decided to bring cloud messaging to the next level. So today, I'm very excited because I finally get to announce our new service. Google Cloud Messaging for Android. Thank you. We specifically designed this service to make it simple. So how do you get started, for example? You go to the Google Developer Console, click Enable GCM, and you're done. There's no more client login that you have to care about. So no more sign up form or waiting for activations. And best of them all, we got rid completely of quota. Thank you. We're launching this service because we want to make it powerful. 
we want to address a lot more use cases out there. Let's go back to our news server example. What that application wants to do is to deliver that update on that topic to a big bunch of its subscribers in one time with one request. And now we can do that. A voice over IP or a video chat application wants to deliver an incoming call request if and only if the user at the other end of the line is online right now. Otherwise, there's no point. And GCM makes this really simple. And instant messaging applications, they don't really have a syncing problem. They have a messaging problem. Send to sync is a bit tight for them. They want to deliver the content of the chat message straight down to the application and be done with it. And now you can. And finally, we've been working really hard to make this service fast. But how fast can GCM get? We take 4.7 milliseconds to send the message. Now that I gave you the flashy numbers, I'm going to read through the disclaimers. <laughs> this means 4.7 milliseconds is when GCM receives the message till the time that GCM sends the message. It does not include the latency due to the network between the server and the client for one simple reason. I don't have a say on that. And second, this works if the new server is here at the Moscone Center and the user is probably in Ocean Beach, San Francisco. But globally, what is the average latency that GCM introduced with those billions of messages, including use cases like the new server in Munich, Germany, and the user in Taipei, Taiwan? You know, GCM has quite a bit of routing to do with that case. Well, globally, GCM still takes less than a tenth of a second to process the message. Promise you're not going to notice this. But the best part of them all is that all this is still completely free. <laughs> so let's dive into this. Since the European Championship is going on, and Italy just won, yes. <laughs> let's say that we want to build the best football application ever, or soccer. So first thing first, what we want to do is to deliver score updates in real time during live events. And to do this, we're going to use GCM. So let me give you a high level overview of how this system works. Well, first of all, our football application needs to tell the server that we want to use GCM. To do this, it sends a registration request, and GCM server generates a registration ID for us. Now, what is a registration ID? you can consider it as an address for this application on this device. The football app sends the address to the server, so when he wants to send the message, he can tell GCM where to deliver it to. Now let's say that for some unknown reason, our users want to uninstall our app. The GCM server doesn't know yet that the app is gone. So when the football server sends a message, he sends it down. Now the GCM framework on the device realizes, oops, the op is gone. So it, it tells back to the server, invalidate this address. From this moment on, every single message that the football server sends, it bounces back with an error of device not registered. If you get this type of error, it's a good thing to get rid of the registration ID from your database. So now that we have a high level picture of, of how the system works, let's go ahead and implement this. Remember when I said that all you need to do is to go to the developer console and click Enable Google Cloud Messaging for Android. If you do so, you'll end up on a page like this. We only need two things here. The project ID up there and the API key down there. And you can consider these two as a username and password pair. Just grab them and you're done for good with this. So we go ahead and start writing some code finally. Let's start with the application on the device. Three simple steps. Number one, we said we want to register. To do this, we send an intent to the GCM framework, which then talks to the server and generates the ID for us. So how do we send this intent? Now bear with me, because the code can get a bit complicated here. With the GCM client library we just released on the SDK as open source code, the, the line in red is all you need to write. So you call the register function and pass in the project ID. 
that will make sure that the project ID is correct because that's the only authorized sender that can deliver messages to this one application. But perhaps I oversimplify the code a bit because if we leave the code in this state, every time the user clicks on the application, we're gonna do this registration dance over and over again. To fix this, we add one line of code. The get registration ID gives us an empty string if we did not register yet, so we should go ahead and do so. Or it returns a registration ID, in which case we are done, and we can proceed to our second step. Now the server is done generating our registration ID. It sends it to the framework, which then delivers it to us via an intent. So all we need to do is to listen for this intent. And here are how we do that. Extremely simple. We extend the GCM base intent service class and we override the onRegister function. Now this function gives us already a registration ID, so we take it and give it to our server. But since we're here, there are two things that we want to listen for. Registrations and messages. So let's go ahead and see how we grab a message. Same exact thing. We override the onMessage function. If we need the payload, we extract it from the intent. And now it's our time to do some magic. So we can go ahead and see step number three, permissions. What we do want our users to know that we are using GCM because we are effectively sending messages from the cloud. We are using data from the network, which is not always free. In Jelly Bean, we made this extremely simple again. It's one line of code in the manifest file. Um, you still see C2DM written up there. It's not a typo. It's because you want to keep it backward compatible with Froyo Plus devices. So let's see what we've been checking so far. Our application can register with GCM. We can receive registrations and messages from the cloud. And we can tell our users that we are using data from the network. Nothing else to do. So we can go ahead and have a look at the server. What does our server know? So in step number two, we gave him the registration ID. And the authentication slide, we gave him the API key. So to send the message, what the football server needs to do is to perform an HTTP POST request to the GCM server and pass in, along with the message, the registration ID and the API key. So the GCM server get the registration, the API key, and sends it directly to an authentication server, which in turn responds with the project ID. Remember the username and password pair. But if you also remember step number one, that the registration ID contains the project ID. We pass it into the register function. So GCM takes that project ID, compares it to the one from the auth server, and if they do match, it delivers the message to the device, to the application specified by the registration ID. Let's have a look at an example of a request. In blue up there is what we're gonna put in the header of the HTTP POST request. The content type, and GCM allows for plain text and JSON. Authorization key is our password, the API key. While in green is what we put in the body of the message. The registration ID, which is the address of the device, and the content of the message. So now we have a full working client-server application, which is able to deliver score updates during real time, during live events, and we can notify our users that Portugal just closed the match. This is pretty cool, but let's make it more awesome. Say that we want to add news updates to our application. We want our users to be notified about news of their favorite teams, of their favorite users. For example, I heard that Beckham was holding on top of his head a giant cup. Too bad for him was a Stanley Cup. We won't, deliver, we won't deliver this news to all his users. And to do this, we're going to use the message multicasting API. The idea is that we send one HTTP request with one message, and GCM delivers it to all the devices that we specified at the same time. And since it's a news update, we also want to use the send to sync mechanism. Let's look at the request. The first parameter in red up there is the collapse key. This comes from the C2DM times. If you remember when I said that the new server sends three messages, three updates about the very same topic, and when the device comes back online, only one gets delivered, well, this happens if GCM knows that those messages refer to the very same topic. A 
And to do so, we need to specify the very same collapse key. Now below, we see the registration IDs. And this time we have put two, or a list of them, which is the list of all the devices that we want GCM to deliver this message to. Let's have a look at the response. Well, GCM answers us with the number of messages succeeded, the number of messages that failed, and the list in the same order in which we specify the registration IDs in the request, with a message ID if it was successful, or an error code name in case it failed. So to summarize, we can send one HTTP request with one message and deliver it to multiple devices. And GCM allows us to specify up to 1,000 devices per one request. So if you look at our app, as you can clearly see, we have a Nexus 7 and a Galaxy Nexus, which all of you have now. Our application can receive the news update at the same time if our football server sends one request. Well, let's keep going. We want to know what David Beckham has to say about this Stanley Cup. It would be really cool if we could add social updates inside our application, delivered by some third-party service that does this for us. The idea is that our football server will deliver a message, a news update or a score update, straight down to our application, while a third-party service will deliver a social update to our application. GCM allows for this, and it's very simple. Let's look at the registration code again. In the register function, this time we specify a list of project IDs. These are all the authorized senders that will be able to deliver messages down to our application. When GCM receives this registration request, it creates one registration ID, which contains the list of all the senders. So when we listen for the registration ID, all we need to do is to send it to both our football server and to the third party social update server. So we, with one common registration ID, we allow multiple parties to deliver multiple different messages to our very own application. And GCM allows us to specify up to 100 different project IDs per application. So our football server sends the news update, and the social update server sends the social update, and both get delivered to the, our app. Well, let's keep going. We want to monetize with our application. First, it would be cool if the app could tell us, hey, the match just started right now. But second, it would be awesome if it tells us, look, if you go into one of these bars, which we have deals with, before the match is over, and you show our application, you're going to get 25% discount on the spiciest chicken wings ever. And I really love chicken wings. Sounds a good deal. So we can, the idea is that we send a message down, but we don't want to deliver it unless, if the message expired. If we, if we send in this message after the match is over, we don't want the application to receive it. Obviously, the, appli the application could see the message, detect that there is a timestamp that expired, and decide to drop it. But why deliver it in the first place? So GCM helps us here and allows us to specify a lifetime for a message. The idea is very simple. We send the message. If the device is offline and the message expires before the device comes back online, well, GCM simply gets rid of it. Let's have a look at the request. First parameter up there in red is time to leave, which is how we specify the lifetime of the message in seconds. There is a second parameter called delay while idle. This as well comes from the C2DM times. It is a very nice feature. It lets us tell GCM server, look, even if the device is online, do not deliver the message unless the user is doing something with it. If it's idle in the pocket, just do not send the message. Do not wake up the device. This feature is really powerful in combination with time to leave because even if the device is online, sometimes the message could expire because of the delay while idle before it gets delivered. Well, let's go back to time to leave. We can specify values between zero seconds and four weeks. If we set a value of zero, well, what it means is that if GCM receives the message and the device is online, we deliver it immediately. If it's offline, we just drop it on the floor. If we do not specify any parameter, well, GCM adds a default value of four weeks. The reason behind this is really simple. Say that you're a speaker in a conference like me right now, 
it's your first time, you're, you're all tense, and your hands are shaking, and you drop your phone in the toilet. Happens to everybody, right? I think they gave us a seven-inch tablet, so it's a bit too big to fit in the pipes. I save it. <laughs> so the device is offline, and, and the server keeps on sending messages. But it's not going to come back online. So after four weeks, the GCM decides to do some cleanup and clears the database. But the best feature of them all, the one I like, I like the most, is to be able to chat during live events in real time with users I don't know, but with which I, I share the passion about this sport. And to do this, we use the very basic messaging functionality of GCM. The idea is that we want to send the chat message with the content straight down to the application and be done with it. So if, for example, we send three messages while the device is offline, what we want GCM to do is to deliver all three of them, one after the other, as soon as the device comes back online. Let's look at the request. The simplest of them all, registration ID and the data of the message. But say that I went on vacation for a weekend or for a week. I went to Australia driving the savannah way. I was lucky if I see a person, definitely was not connected online. So when I come back, I'm actually really scared of turning on my device. Who knows how much data is sitting on the cloud waiting for me to just turn on the phone? If GCM detects this use case, well, it does one simple thing. It just deletes all your data. And instead, it creates one little message that gets delivered down to our application and says, look, you're completely out of sync. There is so much data waiting for you on your server. Just go sync yourself. It's an angry little message. And what it tells us is, how many messages we are behind, how many messages have been deleted. And if you use our client library, there is also a helper function. You override the undeleted messages, and you get this total number of messages deleted, so you can go ahead, connect to your server, and do a full sync. But how much content does GCM allows us to put in a message? We are allowed to specify up to four kilobytes of payload per single message. And we can send up to 100 messages if the device is offline, before GCM decides to delete them and have us trigger a full sync. So let's pause for a bit, and let's check what we have seen so far. We have been delivered news updates with one HTTP request to up to 1,000 devices using the multicasting API. We've been leveraging third-party services features by adding them as authorized senders to deliver messages to our application. We've been delivering events or messages that expires by using the time to leave parameter. And finally, we've been adding instant messaging functionality to our application by using the very basic GCM messaging API. So with this in mind, we can go back to our very first feature, the one in which we deliver score updates in real time, and make it better by using a combination of some of these APIs. In this case, I would use the collapse key, because if if a, if a team scores twice, and then we come online, but well, only the last message matters. Time to leave, because if the match is over before we come online, then we don't want to receive any message. And multicasting, because that simply makes our life easier. So now we have this awesome server that sends lots of messages to lots of users, keeping them up to date, with social updates, news updates, score updates, and whatnot. But what happened to all these messages? When the football server sends a message to GCM, what happens to it? Does it get dropped, sent, received, collapsed? I mean, mobile networks have pretty flaky connections. One moment they're up, the second later they're down. I drive through a tunnel, connection drops. I exit the tunnel, back up. How reliable is GCM? Well, Google Cloud Messaging has this technology we call reliable message queue. RMQ, which sits between the server and the GCM framework on the device. And what it does, it ensures that the messages are delivered reliably. For example, if the server sends a message and right there, right, when we lose the connection before hitting the device, message is gone. Now, the server swears it, it sent the message, but the device never received it. When the connection comes back up, the device connects to GCM during the login dance, RMQ figures out that the message has not been delivered, so the server goes ahead and sends it again. Now, ensuring message delivery, the classic way to do it is by hacking a message. 
server sends a message, the device receives the message, the device sends an act of the message, the server receives the act, and marks the message as delivered. But this mechanism is a bit expensive in terms of data and resources for us. Because if both sides have to send an act message every time they receive one, well, we basically double the number of messages. So what RMQ does is a little clever thing and implements a variant of a selective hacking. The high level idea here is that both sides stores a bunch of messages and once in a while we act a bunch. But this optimization reveals something, one of the biggest strengths of GCM. It is one that you guys don't even need to care about because it's transparent to the users and to developers, which is while Google Cloud Messaging is committed, is focused to deliver the best user experience by providing fresh and up-to-date data for all the apps, it is heavily optimized for battery life. Now let me give you a high-level overview of some of the features that we added to GCM to optimize for battery. One thing that GCM knows is what's happening on the cloud. It sees a lot of messages coming from different applications. And if we go back to the collapsing mechanism, remember the three messages on the same update, and when the device comes back online, only one gets delivered. Well, that's awesome if the device is offline. But what happens if the device is online? Does it make sense to send continuously the very same update, the same news every 30 seconds, maybe? If GCM detects such a pattern, well, then he decides to start throttling this type of message. And by throttling, it's a very simple thing. We just delay the delivery of this message. Now, delaying the delivery achieves two things. One, it increases the chances of collapsing. Let's say that we send this update every 30 seconds, and let's say that the, the delay is two minutes. Instead of sending four messages, we send only one. But second, and more importantly, increases the chances of batching. Now, if we, put, if we put a message in the throttle queue and we start the timer, let's say two minutes, I'm just giving random numbers here, and, bef and two seconds before the alarm goes off so we can send the message, another application sends a different message which we want to throttle as well. Well, when the alarm goes off, we send both messages because the most expensive thing that GCM can do is to deliver a message. We wake up the network, we wake up the radio, we wake up the resources, so if we send one message, the best thing we can do is to send everything that we have. And following this idea, let's say that we have a few messages in the throttle queue, and another server sends one message which we don't want to throttle. It's probably a chat message, instant message, SMS type, or whatever. When this message comes along, even if the throttle queue should keep this message for two more minutes, we just piggyback on this one and deliver everything. But we want to do more batching. So what if the server knew some, something of the client? What if the client tells him, hey, I'm idle? Now the chances that the message from the cloud is the one that prompts the user to wake up the device and look at it diminishes over time. If we have been sending messages from the cloud for an idle device for up to an hour and the user's never reacted to it, well, we can kind of assume that the next message is not the one that's going to have the user look at it and unlock it. Now, the best thing we can do if we detect a similar pattern is to batch all the messages on the cloud and send messages, batch of messages once in a while. But more, what if the device could tell us, look, the radio is up and the display is on, maybe the user is browsing the web. Well, what a perfect moment to send out messages. What if it could tell us, I'm plugged in? Well, battery life is less of a concern. Maybe data is. So for data, what if we knew that it's connected over Wi-Fi rather than 4G or 3G? Well, one is definitely cheaper. But all this optimization work really well if you're a power user. I have millions of applications. I'm a super popular guy. I receive messages continuously. Well, this is really awesome. But if I have two apps that once in a while sends a message, well, if my device starts telling the server, hey, I'm up on my radio, I'm plugged in, well, that's worse. Right? We are wasting messages, wasting data. So since the server is the one that has global knowledge of what's happening, it's the one that's going to tell the device, look, now is a perfect moment for you to tell me when you're idle. Or, look, now it's a perfect moment for you to shut up. Another thing is use cases are different. They vary by usage behavior. Let's say that we have still few apps, 
And one of these sends once in a while the delay by I, while idle bit. Remember, like, we can send a message, but we don't deliver it unless the device is unlocked. Well, then GCM would tell the device, hey, I need to know when you're idle and when you're up. But I don't need to know that frequently. So just tell me you're idle five minutes in. Well, in other use cases, it would be way better for optimization to tell the device, hey, let me know you're idle the moment the screen turns off. This is a really cool space where lots of innovation is happening. But one thing we learned here, that our messages can be in yet another state. They can be sent if the device is online. They can be stored if the device is offline. They can be collapsed if the device is offline and another message with the same collapse key comes along. And now they can also be throttled. So on an average day, for those billions of messages that we manage, what happens to these messages? Where do they fit? Which of these categories do they fall in? We went ahead and analyzed our logs and found out that on an average day, almost 55% of messages are delivered to online devices, while almost 42% they're stored on the devices, waiting for the devices to come back online. 2.6 are collapsed, uh, yes, collapsed, and 1.2 they're throttled. Those popular guys, the 1%. We found two things. One is that GCM does not lose messages. If we receive a message, we know exactly in which of these categories falls. And two, well, it would be really awesome if our developers could have access to similar stats. So we went ahead and integrated with the Android Developer Console, which already shows stats for your applications. But now if you log in, you can also see this type of metrics for your GCM and C2DM application. In the few weeks, Android Developer Console will roll out a new UI. So let me give you a preview of this new UI integrated with our metrics. Here it is. On the top left corner, you have a drop-down box menu where you can select the metric type. In this case, it's the GCM registrations. Now, this metric means the number of requests the devices out there make to register for this application with the GCM servers. On the top right, you can select the period of time for which you want to analyze this metric. And the tabs in the middle, they allow you to do a breakdown of this metric by Android version, device, country, language, and so on. For example, here, the breakdown is by Android version, and we can see that the majority of requests come from gingerbread ICS devices followed by Froyo. We can go ahead and have, a, for example, look at the application version tab, we see we launch a few versions. The last one is most popular. And go ahead and go to the GCM errors tab, which is going to change name soon, and represents all the successful messages and all the error messages. Well, in this case, we had no failures. But the best metric is the GCM messages one. If we look at the graph, we can see that in the first week of June, something happened. All of a sudden, we started delivering way more messages. So either we rolled out a feature or rolled out a bug. And if you look at the Android version breakdown, we can see that the majority of messages we send, they land on gingerbread, Froyo, and ICS devices, which is kind of in line with what we've seen with the registration request metric. We can look, for example, at the country. We see we launched in North America as almost all the messages that we send land on users in US and Canada. And finally, look at the GCM messages status, which shows the metrics I was talking about. Sent, store, collapse, and throttle. And invalid requests, in which in this case, they look like to be the majority. They are more than 70% invalid requests. So we can go ahead in the GCM errors tab and see what's happening. Very simple. We all of a sudden start to send a lot of messages, but we ran out of quota. Now, the best way to fix this is to migrate to GCM. Now, I'm feeling a bit lucky, and I'll try to give a, a live demo of one GCM application which all of you have been using so far, which is the Google I.O. app, and see how the stats look like today in the Android Developer Console. Can you guys see, or should I magnify more? That's good. This is GCM messages, and you can see that on June 25th is when we started to deliver the content. 
we can see the majority of devices are uh, ICS, gingerbread, honeycomb. Weird. Let's go to GCM message status, and what we see is there are sent messages, store messages, but there are also a lot of throttle messages. Simple explanation, because when we were testing this, we started sending a lot of sync requests, and then GCM decided to start throttling it. And the GCM errors, I want to show you that if we remove the OK, we have not registered errors. We changed the version during the past two days. Um, so we had a bunch of registration IDs in our servers, and when we changed the version and send all the messages, while well, the old registration that were invalid, we just figured it out, and so we had message, uh, errors. And you can see that it's steadily going down, and tomorrow it will probably drop completely. Um, one thing of this metric is that they are daily metrics, and they usually refer to up to the day before. Well, let's go back to our slides. So it said that to fix this error, the best thing you can do is to migrate to GCN. Well, to be honest, it's also the only chance that you have now. Because as of now, C2DM is in deprecation mode. We do not accept signups nor quote increase requests. But do not be scared because the C2DM servers are still up and running. I was debating whether to kill all your applications, but then I flipped the coin. <laughs> I lost it. But GCM servers are also up and running and they're very well, very much alive. And I suggest you migrate for two main reasons. One, well, this service is really cool. And two, not really, this service is really cool. <laughs> and migrating is very simple. Three simple steps. Click to enable GCM, point your server to android.googleapis.com slash gcm slash send. Here you want to use the API key. And all you need to change on the device is to register with the project ID. But if you want to take your time, you can do so. You're not going to bring down the servers for a while. And you can read all the cool new stuff we add in GCM, reading our documentation, which includes a getting started guide with a step-by-step -step tutorial with demo code, which is open sourced, a demo application, which is as well open sourced with instruction on how to use it and run it, a quick and dirty guide for CDM experts on how to migrate, and advanced topics with pro tips on the rest of the documentation. And all this at developer.android.com. Thank you. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I hope to land a little bit longer so I wouldn't get questions, but I guess. Any question? I had a question about multicasting. Um, is there a way to send messages to all devices without specifying individual IDs? So the question is, is there a way to do broadcast of messaging? I expected this question, and the, the short answer is no. And the long answer is, it's a very dangerous feature, right? Every time I think about it, it's like a big red button that if you press it, everything explodes. Um, we're doing our best, and we're still thinking about it. But for now, the best of your options is to use multicasting and add up to 1,000 in batches. Uh, is there any possibility to send uh, cloud messages to uh, applications not installed from Play? Second question I was expecting. That's pretty easy today. Uh, short and long answer, no. Uh, the reason is GCM framework relies on the Google Services framework, which is part of the GMS core, which includes Play and everything else. It's a Google service, and we will provide it only with these other services. OK. I heard a rumor that you don't have to publish it in the Play. So if you upload it and not publish it, is that going to work? Yes. So. To use GCM, you don't have to use the developer console, right? Is that the question? Yeah. Uh, yes. What you're not going to get is the metrics. So to have access to the stats that we show at the end, 
you need to upload your uh, APK on the place, on the developer console. But to use GCM, you don't need to. You just go to the Google Developer Console, where you have all the services, click for the API, and you're done. Okay. Thank you. For an app that already exists, um, and we're using C2DM, we know that when we release an update, not everybody's going to get that update, so we can't just switch it all over to the GCM framework. So do we have to keep two separate systems, one processing C2DM requests and the other one GCM? Uh, for existing C2DM applications, uh, the migration is, um, well, you need to up the version of the app, which will have the project ID, and all the, the tricky part is on your server. Now, you have to tell the server, I'm using GCM, so he knows to connect to this new URL rather than the old one. So That's all you need to do. Basically, we would have to maintain uh, our C2DM code until enough clients are off of that. That, that is that version correct, of unless you want to kill all your clients, yes. Because we changed the authentication method. Got it. But this is not just forced by GCM. It's a client login is deprecated, so we had to switch away anyways. Got it. Thank you. So if I have an application that relies on uh, uh, GC, GCM, <laughs> um, in, it to, in order to synchronize, and once in, it, my messages expire after a maximum of four weeks, um, what, are, what are the circumstances where the client receives the delete message that hey, says, hey, you're way out of date, you need to go and synchronize? Is that only when um, messages uh, just get deleted, or are there certain other kind of circumstances? Can I guarantee, can I always rely on that? Oh, the question you know, is, if a message I'm repeating just to see if I understood correctly. Sure. If a message expires with a time to leave of four weeks, do we get notified about the fact that it expired? Uh, no. Because time to leave means simply that if the message expired, the device don't need to know that. Uh, what I suggest to do, because you're saying, well, if, a, if an app doesn't connect for four weeks, well, some of my messages are deleted, right? Well, four weeks is a long time. And what I would do is that have a, a full sync of my app if I detect that for four weeks it's not being connected to the, to the okay. network. Good idea. Thanks. Uh, is the Gmail sign up still required for um, uh, Google Cloud messaging? A Gmail sign up? Yeah, at the beginning for it to work. Uh, no, if, so to go to the Google Developer Console, you need a Google account? No, not that. I'm talking about from device. No. Um, from ICS Plus, you do not need a Google account on the device. So it would, well, I mean, for example, C2DM, you have to have a sign up for um, Gmail, right? Uh, before uh, before Be it works. Before right? I, right now you're saying that it's, uh, it's not required, right? It's, it doesn't mean if it's GCM or C2DM. It's a change in ICS. From ICS Plus, you're not required to add a Google account on the device to be able to use push messaging. Okay, one last thing. Uh, what is the heartbeat now? What is the heartbeat rate? For a persistent connection? Yeah. Well, it varies. Depends on the carriers, depends on the countries. Uh, the default classic value we used is 28 minutes, but it's changed a lot on, based on carriers and countries. Okay, thank you. I take, I take it that this means that it's backported to at least gingerbread. GCM works from Froyo Plus. Awesome, thanks. No uh, what about the security of the messages? Uh, how is that going to be handled? So if I was sending like so, account information for a bank. So if you add uh, information on the payload of message, well, the connection between your server and GCM server should be HTTPS. Right. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, then you can send the message, and the connection between the GCM server and device is secure, is encrypted, and whatnot. But you can do your own security on top of that and encrypt your payload and decrypt it down. On the, okay, and on what the about the messages, I guess, on the GCM? Do they have, uh, like, a shelf life, or does Google delete the messages after a certain amount of time, or are they kept for X amount of time? Um, so the question is, if you send the message, how right. long GCM stores them? Yeah, and I guess uh, if you send a message through GCM, uh, does Google hold on to that message and keep it somewhere? Like right. So unless you specify time to live of zero, in which case we're not storing it at all, 
we store it for up to the lifetime of the message. If you right. don't specify it, the top is four weeks, and we store it in our servers, but we don't modify the message or anything. As soon as the device is online, we just send it down. Okay, but for, I'm thinking from like a banking, for a banking application, if you're sending messages through GCM, they might not want uh, their, those messages to be stored on Google servers. They just want it to be like a transparent Then the only, or, well, then the only option you have is specify time to live of zero. We do not. Nothing will be stored on. We do not store that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I don't know if this was mentioned, but uh, can you send messages from a device? We have an API for that. It's not open to developers yet. We use it a lot for all the optimization I was talking about. Um, we are thinking to maybe open it later on. Depends on use cases. Uh, so keep coming your feedbacks and requests, and we will back it. And then one more thing, is there any failure callback for if a message fails like immediately or within a certain period of time? Um, what type of failures? Like, so if your request from your server to our GCM server does not fail, well then we ensure delivery in the time span of the four weeks. Okay, all right, thanks. Hi, Hi. is there any chance to uh, use GCM for other devices like iOS devices as well? Uh, no, uh, the reason is, you know, we have a persistent connection between the Android and our servers on the background, uh, something that you're not allowed to have in other systems. Okay. You can use APNS for Apple and Microsoft Push, I think. Okay. Yes. Uh, second question, um, is there some sort of like time frame delivery guarantee? Like say my server ping GCM, what's the guaranteed time frame it's gonna uh, reach my device considering uh, that say it is online and available to GCM? So we are a very reliable service, but we do not, I don't wanna say the guaranteed delivery. It's a free service. Up. What if I need that? Is there like a paid version that I can like get a? Nope. It's no paid version, nothing. Uh, all Google services and apps uses this as the reliable mechanism to deliver messages to Android. It works really well. But we just offer a free service, and we have no, uh, we, we don't want to say we guarantee that. OK, cool. Thank you. Hi. Would GCM be appropriate for uh, turn-based game messaging? Uh, what, what game? Turn-based turn game, like a board game, multiplayer. Yeah, um, you know, if you need very quick messaging between two devices, for example, well, you should open your connection there because you want to keep up the radio anyways, right? right. So the, the main issue if you use mobile networks is uh, the paging mechanism. So let's say that you have a device and I send you the message. Even if I take those 4.7 milliseconds, well, now the mobile carrier has to do the paging, wake up the radio, do the connection, reconnect the socket, and send it down, right? So that can take a few seconds. So you know, and radius goes dormant really quickly because they also want to optimize for battery. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a game uh, modality, so you want to keep the radio up, at that point, why don't you establish your own peer-to-peer -peer connection? Yeah, I'm you, you can use GCM to create this know. connection, yeah. but then, you know, to discover and something, but then... You can. Right, and is th there's a way, I assume, to say this message is okay to be throttled and this other message needs to n never be throttled? Um, well, you can look at the stats. You cannot, for now, V1, see a particular message would happen to it. Right. We are thinking to extend this and so that if you can put a message ID, which is what we return in the response code, and look what happened to his life, to the lifetime of this message. But for V1, you just see the number of total throttle. But as I said, throttle messages happen only to very small superpower users. Okay, thank you. Are there any limitations around um, like hardware profiles, like a Google authorized Android hardware device versus I take the open source version of Android, do a build and put it on some independent hardware profile? Will this still still work? Uh, this works on any device that has the GMS core APK. Okay. If I have a really a uh, large number of messages to send. Is it possible to batch a bunch of messages for different destinations in a single service call? Uh, we don't have localization uh, API to offer. Uh, this should be done by your server and knows what you want to deliver. Okay. Um, cool. Thanks. 
is there a way to know whether the message is throttled or saved and not sent uh, can you repeat please is there a way for my server to know whether the message is throttled or not sent uh, not not yet as we were saying before uh, you can see how many messages has been throttled or stored whatever but uh, for now for a particular message we don't offer yet that trace it's coming okay hi in your server code example you showed a bunch of registration or device IDs that would get uh, sent is that required or if the devices are registering with GCM can you just not have it broadcast to all the registered devices right like the registration IDs list allows you to specify one up to a thousand devices. Right? You have to say which device you want to hit. Right? So you can put one or a thousand. Or, I mean, two, three, whatever. So you, you have to put at least one. You can't just say all the registered devices will get notified, right? Oh, okay. So no, we don't offer a broadcast feature. Oh, right? so that's what you want. It's like exactly. saying to all match. Yeah. As I was saying, it was one, one of the first questions. Um, it's a very dangerous feature for us to provide because if you abused, you know. So you mentioned Google services use this to deliver messages. Does like the Google Talk app use this to deliver instant messages? Google Talk application. Uh, it uses this channel um, definitely for down delivery and use also this channel for upstream delivery. Uh, yes, it's the same channel. So they use cloud to device messaging? Uh, next version that we're going to be using cloud device messaging like everyone else. Uh, talk right now, it's uh, he has his own channel inside this connection there. Will, uh, will this work on a Wi-Fi only device? Excuse me? Will this work on a Wi-Fi only device? Yes, of course. It actually works faster. Well, if you guys have more offline questions, I can take them in the office hours upstairs in the Android section. Thank you. <laughs>